this is May Yu. I'm glad to see you here on another fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. Okay, so today I'm going to reimagine and design cute or odd looking animal characters that we all know and love. And I'm going to turn them into graceful human princesses. Now, the thing is, not all of these animals are going to, I think, look or like they're not going to be so easy to humanify. Like, I'm starting with Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony. I guess that's kind of easy to begin with, but later on, you know, especially when we get to the end of this video, I think there's uh, one particular character I think it's gonna be a little bit trickier to reimagine as a human princess and still make that character look like the original. So I'm super excited to see how these are going to turn out. Thank you all so much for all of your likes and kind comments in my recent videos. And as some of you know, I've started to do more shorts content on my channel. So in the past week, I've done like four of them. So let me know what, like, what content do you like to see from me and my channel? And let me know in the comments in those shorts if you want to see more things like that. So then I'm going to just be browsing the comments uh, in those short videos and the more people who comment or who like those videos the more I think okay Yes, my fans are responding to this type of content and I'm going to try to do more for you in the future I'm also really excited to just be able to do more kinds of art and share like different types of art that I usually don't show in my long videos, for example, or I just, you know, I can hang out with you guys more. So it's all really fun and I really look forward to it. All right, I'm really glad to be reimagining Rainbow Dash again on my channel. Last time was when I reimagined her in 10 various different art styles and like different fandoms. This time she's going to be a beautiful uh, princess. So I wanted to really uh, like emphasize her hair. Like I love the original's main design, the tail, the, you know, like the beautiful like um, rainbow colors, of course. So in my princess design, I really wanted to have like her hair flowing around her. Maybe she's got a Rapunzel thing going on. Maybe they could even be friends. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to design her hair in such a way so that, you know, it's uh, like a really um, distinctive feature in my design. And along with the dress and her crown, I wanted to really like have these simple looking um, like design elements that can connect with the original character in a creative way. I was thinking about Rainbow Dash's cutie mark and the Thunderbolt with the three colors in there and I felt that would be a really nice like, uh, you know, element to incorporate into my dress design somehow. But I didn't really want to go the easy route where I just slap the, you know, cutie mark on her dress and call it a day. Like, no, I, I really wanted to come at it from a different angle and design it like I was thinking maybe it could be cool if the Thunderbolt came down her front and it came into like it, it went into a little small point at her waist and then from that point down into the gown it kind of flares out or fans out so there's this nice dynamic energy to the actual like um like the actual lines but also I feel like I'm infusing that uh, design into my dress design in a, in a more creative way so it's not just like cut and paste I actually thought about the design of it and I kind of created it in such a way so that it flows into my reimagining more I was also really mindful of the detailed areas and how I wanted to keep some areas of the design like her dress not so detailed so then the eye has some like a chance to rest in my design. What 
What do you think might happen if Rainbow Dash actually had her own like princess movie, like you know Ariel or Belle or Tiana? Like, how would that, like, how would that movie go? I, that is so interesting. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I think, oh, just all these ideas are coming into my mind right now. All right, here is another cute animal that is going to be turned into a human princess. And this time I'm going to go in a completely different direction. I'm really liking the idea of Mei Lin turning into a red panda. I just love that. Like, I love red pandas. I love pandas in general. And like, you know, it's interesting to hear uh, like or to see uh, a movie character with a similar name to me. Like, that is just so cool. Ha! Huh. May turns into a red panda. Anyways, so I wanted to uh, turn the red panda into a human princess. Now, the thing was, for this challenge, I decided not to uh, think about the human character. I just purely wanted to look at the red panda design itself, and from that design only, try to reimagine that into a human princess. Basically, I just wanted to purely go on the physical appearance of the red panda and not Malin. So that was the like direction I wanted to go into because I wanted to have some space for my own like creativity to like, you know, wonder. And I wanted to see what I could come up with based on that red panda design. That was very interesting. I was thinking, how was I, you know, going to handle the face, like the face shape, those ears, the, like the snout, the smile. I wanted to have, obviously, the face look very uh, familiar to connect with the original character. But at the same time, of course, you know, this design had to look like a human and, you know, as a design that I created. I decided to give my princess design like really nice wide soft cheeks, her hair fans out and around her cheeks so it makes her face really, you know, gentle looking, friendly and wide. And that really helps with the like the shape of the red panda face. I thought it was a cute like way to emphasize that. And then for her eyes and her nose and especially that really big grin, I wanted to do something different from what I normally do with my princess like face designs. So I went into a, a completely different direction. I wanted to go closer to the original, like, you know, uh, round eyes that are very close together. And of course, I had to get that really big smile in there with the rounded, like, mouth corners. I like that shape. It's quite distinctive. In the beginning, I wasn't sure how I was going to incorporate like the ear designs into my princess drawing. I didn't want to obviously put ears on my princess because that doesn't make any sense. She is a human, not, you know, like an animal still. So I was thinking, you know, if, if I could somehow incorporate two pointed elements on top of her head, so it reminds me of the ears, I think that's quite important. But how was I going to do that? I didn't want to have like a tiara that had two points because uh, I think I did something similar to that before. So I, I wanted to try something different. I was thinking, you know, in medieval times, some women would have uh, like those pointed princess hats, I think. Uh, but I, you know, that's only the one point. How am I going to get two? So I was doing some research and I actually found out that there is such a thing as a, like a dual pointed princess hat. I think they're called double horned hennens. So that was perfect. And so I designed something that's, you know, similar to what I uh, was researching. I put these two points on her head and then uh, she has a, a, like a shawl or like fabric uh, coming from behind. And I just think that is just so perfect for my princess design. I 
she looks so joyful and like so fun to be with. Like if you entered her castle, I'm pretty sure she's gonna be the first one to give you a great big bear hug. Okay, this last one was quite challenging compared to the other two. So I'm gonna reimagine this uh, very famous sea creature as a human princess. I think I've done him as a human girl before, but this time, because of the princess theme, I need to I needed to go further into the like um, into the outfit design, especially the dress design. So I yeah, I really needed to think carefully on how I was going to present this reimagining. Okay, does she look familiar yet? Let me know in the comments who you think this character is. I think one of the most important uh, elements that I wanted to keep in my reimagining was the fact that the hairstyle had to look more rigid than what I would normally draw and the shape itself had to look square. Oh, and the dress design was really fun. I decided to just kind of make the dress like go out across the hips and then go down into kind of like a really wide, almost like one of those, you know, big Baroque like ball gowns, but I really wanted to emphasize the square corners of the dress. I just thought that was a uh, very, uh, it's different. It's very memorable. <laughs> And I think it it fits my theme well. So reimagining this famous sea sponge was uh, an interesting challenge, I have to say. I really enjoyed uh, like picking apart the different elements that make SpongeBob SpongeBob, and trying to translate them into uh, like uh, like an organic-looking human female uh, that does not look like I just took some girl and made her head like a square. So that was a very nice like way for me to think creatively. It was a really fun experience for this video. And I've been getting some comments, especially in my recent shorts videos from some of you who used to watch me like a long time ago, like years ago, and now you've just found me again. You found my channel and my videos. And I'm just so glad to read your comments because some of you told me that you're still doing art or that you're pursuing art in a more serious way. You have your own art style now, and I'm so glad to know that my channel has helped you for like, you know, for the many years that you've been with me in the past. You made me feel really good. And you know, honestly, I feel really fulfilled as an artist and as a creator here that I've uh, made a difference in some of your lives. That, you know, you are, going into art in your own way. I'm so happy and so proud and I'm cheering for all of you. If you want, subscribe to my channel so you don't have to miss me again and you can catch up on all the like the content that I've been doing these past few years and you can see how I grew through my videos as well. Like I'm always growing and I'm really glad to have all of you on this great grand art adventure together. I've collected over 200 new fan creations from my coloring books since last time and I'll be sharing them at the end of this video. I'm really glad that so many of you are finishing entire coloring books of mine and you're growing your Mayu coloring book collection. 
Keep sharpening your creativity and sharing them on the Mayart hashtag on Instagram. I've noticed many of you are improving your coloring skills while you're relaxing with my books. I've now made over 100 books and counting on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. The link's in the video description. I'll be releasing some new ones in the near future. Ooh, I love doing this. So I was thinking of incorporating the different colored stripes from his socks into the actual like trim design of the dress. Now this has got me thinking, what name would my Spongebob princess character have? So I don't know if Spongebob is going to be a name that fits this design, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What name would you give her or the other princesses? In this video, I think maybe Spongebob? Or Spongebell? Hmm. Yeah, let me know. Smash the like button real good for more content like this and also subscribe in case you haven't yet so you won't miss my future videos. Turn on the bell for notifications so you won't miss any of my future shorts or other videos that I post on a regular basis. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you real soon in my next video. Here are over 260 new fan creations since the last time I shared your coloring masterpieces. And thank you all so much for continuing this wonderful community, you know, for supporting each other's work and sharing your own unique personal takes in my various coloring books. I'm seeing so much more engagement from all of you, whether you're liking other people's posts or challenging your friends and family to color with you. I love seeing how differently the same line art can turn out because each one of us brings something truly unique and special to each piece that we color. I really love it when like certain fans tend to color in certain ways, like they have their own very specific color scheme in mind. Some of you like to use lots of rainbow colors or lots of pastel colors, for example, and some uh, like other people like to use darker colors or very muted tones. And I love all of them so much. They're all so like interesting in their own ways. You know, it just, everyone has their own distinct, uh, like, look and feel, which I love. And when we come together, it just makes this whole community so much more, like, bright and diverse. And just, you know, just so interesting to learn from other people and to see how other people can take, you know, a certain image or a certain, like, even like a color scheme or a certain technique like shading or how you handle different lighting, how you handle hair and just love all of that. It's so fulfilling as an artist and a creator. And to those of you who have completed like entire coloring books of mine and you're like going through them one after the other, I just want to say thank you so much for being so engaged with me and my creativity. And I really, you know, I am very happy to know that my creativity can spark something in you and then what you create can spark something in someone else. And then it just spreads like that. It's just this beautiful, warm feeling that spreads from one person to another and another. So I just really love that about our online like art community and art family.
And in case you're new, or if you want to color in my books but you're having some reservations, maybe you think you might make mistakes or you might make the picture look bad, don't have any reservations or anxiety. And please don't let like any fear hold you back. The great thing about art is, you know, you can just jump into it. If you make mistakes, it's okay, totally okay. Everyone makes mistakes. I've made many mistakes, and that's how you know you can learn from them and grow and improve. So I really hope you get into my coloring books. You can,、uh, you know, have that freedom to let your creativity wander and you know let your imagination go and just follow them and see where it takes you. That is a great free feeling to have. I can't wait to see more of your fan creations on the May Art hashtag on Instagram. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in my next video.